Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio, who has also been watching that debate. Uh, Jake was just talking about what it means when a candidate comes into the spin room after a debate. Is that a sign of a good debate or a bad debate in your view? Look, I think with President Trump, it's not a sign of either, frankly. I do think that he had a great debate. Um, we can sort of hear the, the, the background noise here. But, look, I, I think with President Trump, he had to be sort of talked out of coming to the spin room after the first debate because he really wanted to. And my guess is that he really wanted to come then. He really wanted to come now. This time it worked out. And look, he loves to talk to reporters because he loves to talk to the American people. And I think it's been a consistent theme of his campaign is going anywhere, going into hostile or friendly media, talking to people, answering questions and trying to make his case. He's going to keep on doing that, whatever the format. Did tonight go how you wanted it to go in terms of Harris clearly trying to get under his skin, talking about crowd sizes, talking about former officials like John Kelly and Mark Esper and others? I mean, I heard from some Trump advisors who said he took the the, the debate too much. Do you believe that? No, look, I think that what we saw from Kamala Harris was a lot of platitudes. It was a lot of plans that had no real substance behind them and no real precision behind them. And what is most interesting, and it's really uh, uh, the, the sort of microcosm of this entire race, is Kamala Harris has a record. Donald Trump has a record. Donald Trump is proud of his record and is running to it. Kamala Harris is running away from her record and pretending that somehow her term as president is going to be radically different from her term as vice president, but she can't actually articulate why. And in fact, to the extent that she art articulates it at all, it's by running away from positions that she clearly held just a few years ago or even a few weeks ago. So why didn't Trump push her more on that? Because that is what we hear from you every day on the campaign trail is talking about her reversals. He did not really talk about why haven't you done what you're saying you'll do until his closing statement. Do you think he should have done that sooner? Well, I think he did. I mean, he did it in the closing statement. He also really hammered her on her inconsistencies, right? This is a person who said she wanted to ban fracking. Now she says she doesn't. She wanted to defund the police. Now she says she doesn't. She wanted a secure border. I felt that he really did, actually. On three issues in particular, I think he was very focused on hammering Kamala Harris's in in inconsistencies with her record, what she says now versus what she said even a few weeks ago in some cases. It was on the border, it's on fracking, and it's on defund the police. That was clearly what he's most focused on. And I think it's not surprising because th those are three of the issues that the American people care the most about. I mean, look, this is a person who was to the far left of her own party and now is trying to pretend that she's effectively Donald Trump. My favorite line of the night is when he said she's going to don a MAGA cap and pretend that she agrees with me on everything. I think the American people are too smart to be fooled by Kamala Chameleon acting to be somebody that she's clearly not. Yeah, she kind of smirked when he said that he was going to send her one. On abortion, though, Trump was asked if he would veto a national abortion ban. You have said that he would. He said that the two of you have not talked about that, that you weren't talking for him. Have the two of you not talked about that? So we haven't talked about a veto, but it's clear that Donald Trump doesn't believe in a national abortion ban. He said that his policy is to let the states decide majority of abortion policy in this country. And so I think that really it's a difference of semantics. He thinks it's absurd to even talk about vetoing a piece of legislation that has no chance of being brought. I think it's a totally reasonable point. But again, the, the, the main substantive issue is Donald Trump believes that abortion should be a state policy. And Kamala Harris fundamentally thinks that abortion should be funded by taxpayers right up to the moment of birth. And I, it was interesting that the ABC fact checkers or the moderators who frankly were just helping Kamala Harris in the debate, that they said that no state supports abortion up to the moment of birth. Her own running mate has supported legislation that would remove the requirement that doctors provide life-saving care to babies who survive botched abortion. So I, I think his point is, Democrats are the real radicals on this issue, and whatever cover the moderators provided, the truth is the truth, and their record's pretty out there. On this question specifically, Trump could have said, yes, he would veto a national abortion ban. Why did he not take the opportunity to do so when you know how important abortion is to so many voters? Well, because I think he, he believes it's an absurd hypothetical, which of course it is. Um, no national abortion ban is coming before the United States Senate or the United States Congress. If it did, it would maybe get 10 percent of, of those but bodies to vote for it. why did you say before it? that he would veto it? Why didn't well, you say I that said, before? What, you didn't what say I said is, hypothetical. Well, Caitlin, before. what I said explicitly is that Donald Trump doesn't believe in a national abortion ban. He doesn't. And the question of how far he would go is, is to me like a semantic thing that doesn't actually make sense. It's an absurd proposition. It's never going to happen. And I think what, what President Trump is saying is, I, I don't like to deal in these absurd hypotheticals. It's not going to happen. And he's been clear that he doesn't support it. Well, I, I think there are maybe some women voters who would like for him, would have liked for him to answer that question. The other thing that he brought up, which I was kind of surprised by, I guess I would say, is he brought up 
this misleading false claim that you yourself have talked about in recent days about Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, abducting people's pets and eating them, which officials there have said is not true. You yourself acknowledged it may be false on Twitter. You still told people to, to keep spreading it. But Trump just amplified it to tens of millions of people who were watching. Why push something that's not true? Well, well first of all, city officials have not said it's not true. They've said they don't have all the evidence. They but said we've they heard, have no evidence. We've heard from a number of constituents on the ground, Caitlin, who both firsthand and secondhand reports saying this stuff is happening. So they very clearly, meaning the people on the ground dealing with this, think that it is happening. And I think that it's important for journalists to actually get on the ground and uncover this stuff for themselves when you have a lot of people saying, my pets are being abducted, or geese at the city pond are being abducted and slaughtered right in front of us. This is crazy stuff. And again, whether those exact rumors turn out to be mostly true, somewhat true, whatever the case may be. Caitlin, this town has been ravaged by 20,000 migrants coming in. Health care costs are up. Housing costs are up. Communicable diseases like HIV and TB have skyrocketed in this small Ohio town. This is what Kamala Harris's border policies yeah. have done. And I think it's interesting, Caitlin, that the, the media didn't care about the carnage wrought by these policies until we turned it into a meme about cats. And that speaks to the media's yep. failure to care about what's going on in these communities. If we have to meme about it to get the media to care, we're going to keep on doing it because the media I could sh should care about I what's going on. I saw you say that. I think the media does care about it. I just read a very lengthy report in the New York Times on it. PBS News Hour did a, did a whole story. But, but can I ask by you, us but, talking but you said, about it and bringing it up. Nobody cared about, about this until we raised Senator, this issue. You talked which is about Senator, you talked about that your office has gotten a lot of reports. I mean, if someone calls your office and says they saw Bigfoot, that doesn't mean they saw Bigfoot. Why? I mean, you have a sense of responsibility as a running mate, and he certainly does as, as the candidate to not promote false information, Look right? Caitlin, it's a totally fair point, but nobody's calling my office and saying that they saw Bigfoot. What they're calling and saying is we're seeing migrants kidnap our dogs and cats, and city officials aren't doing anything about it. Now, again, I have a responsibility as a United States senator. I think the media has a responsibility as an institution that cares about truth to actually take people seriously when they say their lives have been ruined by this migrant crisis. And again, if every single thing that the media says about this story is false, the verifiable facts are that this community has had their lives destroyed by 20,000 migrants coming in and uprooting life. Uh, again, officials said no credible evidence of the claim. But Senator J.D. Vance, thank you for joining us with Thanks, your Caitlin. debate reaction. Jake, back to you. Thanks so much. Uh, interesting comment. I mean, looking at a New York Times story from eight days ago uh, about the immigration crisis uh, in Springfield and the problems created there, saying we have to make up nonsense that isn't true so that the media covers things that the media is already covering is an odd defense. But I digress. Chris? Well, Charles Krauthammer, the late, great conservative columnist, talking about people like J.D. Vance in this particular case when they're trying to defend the indefensible said, whatever they're paying them, it's not enough. And the fact is that he sat there and tried to contort himself into saying that one, Trump had a great debate, he didn't, and two, to defend something that has been almost totally discredited. And, you know, and, and also I have to take personal offense at the idea that, that he says that the media hasn't cared about immigrant crime. We've, there have been all kinds of stories and all kinds of coverage of immigrant crime and, and every state is a border state. It was a big issue in the Republican uh, convention. We covered those speeches. It was very affecting to make up stories now about pets and to sit there on national television and defend it, as Krauthammer would say, whatever they're paying them, it's not enough. Can we just cut through to what it is? It's not about the media not reporting on immigration. This is something that is racist. This is a racist meme. The reason why we are covering the memes isn't because we're covering the underlying allegation about immigration. What we are covering are, are uh, Republican public officials lying. Lying, but lying also suggesting uh, that people of color are eating your pets. That's, that's racism. 